I love it. I love it. Wow. <laughs> I love it. Look at this. This is, this is the greatest thing I've ever seen. Hey, I'm not surprised. Hey, my homies, my homies. What's up, guys? Islam Makashev taking on Tiago Moises. There's another UFC card to break down. So that's what we're going to do, man. Let's go. As always, guys, use your own techniques on the like button. Whatever you want to do, man, set it up, right? Set that like button up. Take it out. Get the finish. All right, let's jump into this card. All right, guys, kickstarting this card, we've got Rodrigo Nascimento taking on Alan Badu. Now, this one's quite a difficult prediction to start with. If we take a look at Rodrigo Nascimento, this guy is primarily a jiu-jitsu fighter. If the fight is kept in a kickboxing situation, he doesn't look the best. You only take a look at what Chris Dorcas did to him with the boxing. You know, he kind of looked a little bit out of place on the feet. So if you're Rodrigo Nascimento, you want this fight on the mat. Now the flip side, looking at Alan Badu, zero wins, one loss inside the UFC. This man definitely has some weaknesses too. Tom Aspinall took him down with ease. Not only took him down with ease, but ended up in full mount too. You know, there's one thing getting a takedown, but then there's getting a takedown and ending up in the most dominant position you can end up in. That's what happened to Alan Badu. So yeah, guys, if you're trying to make a, a solid prediction on this one, if you're trying to lay money on this one, man, good luck. It's really a winnable fight for either guy. If Rodrigo gets the takedown, I think he probably gets a submission. If Alan Badu can somehow show improvements, keep the fight standing, then I would say he is the better striker. Really a 50-50 matchup in my opinion. I'm going to take Alan Badu to hopefully keep the fight standing. My numbers, guys, I would put this one pretty close, right? If Rodrigo can't get it to the mat, he could be in trouble. If the fight goes to the mat, Alan Badu's in a lot of trouble. And the actual numbers, we've got Rodrigo Nascimento minus 300. Oh my goodness. Yeah, that's crazy. Like I said, man, if he can get the fight to the mat, which Alan Badu looked pretty easy to take down, there may be, yeah, minus 300, but if it doesn't go to the mat, that's crazy. All right, moving into the next one, we've got Francisco Figueredo, which is Davison Figueredo's little bro, taking on Malcolm Gordon. Yeah, this ain't a bad matchup. Francisco, he looked pretty, pretty okay in his debut. I mean, he got very tired against Jerome Rivera, right? He showed a bit of his skill. But the one thing that I take away from that matchup, Figueredo, just like his brother, hasn't got the best cardio. Now, Malcolm Gordon, there's not too many positives to speak about with Malcolm at the moment. Zero wins, two losses inside the UFC. It's not going too well. You look at the way he was TKO'd in his last matchup against Suma Daji. Suma Daji just split the guard and Malcolm Gordon just flopped to the mat. And that was that. If Figueredo gets tired the way he did against Rivera, Malcolm Gordon's going to take advantage way more than what Rivera did. Now, Malcolm Gordon on the flip side, like I said, the chin doesn't look great. So Figueredo might just wipe him out round one. For me personally, guys, I'm going to take Francisco Figueredo. I just feel more comfortable taking that prediction. Betting wise though, yeah, no way I'm going to bet on this matchup. My numbers, I'll put Figueredo minus 150. I would go higher than that, but the cardio, it's a real concern. And we've got Figueredo minus 300, which again, just crazy. Because if Figueredo gets tired round two and Malcolm Gordon can take advantage, that's crazy. Same as the first fight. If Rodrigo doesn't take down Allen, yeah, it could get crazy. So yeah, I do disagree with those numbers, but my prediction is going to be Figueredo. Yeah, this is a good matchup. So let's start with the Brazilian. Three Brazilians in a row now. Now Anderson dos Santos, this guy's like 35 years old at bantamweight, which is a red flag, a big red flag. But he isn't a bad fighter. You know, you look at the way he choked out Martin Day. His BJJ is there. If you take him to the mat, he's going to look to choke you out. Now, striking on the feet 
he isn't the most technical, but he's going to throw some heavy power. You know, this guy is ultimately looking to finish. Miles John's on the flip side, this guy's a wrestler. If you watch his last fight, you wouldn't really guess that he's a wrestler. Because the way he sets down Kevin Natividad, oh my goodness. I can remember someone leaving a comment on my video saying, Miles John's made Kevin Natividad look like a slinky. You know, it's, it's kind of true. He really did look like a slinky, it was that bad. So yeah, Miles John's setting people down with uppercuts now. Kind of evolving, you know, good wrestler. And the striking's coming along, the boxing. So if Miles Johns chooses to take down Dos Santos, you know, you have to be careful. Because the jiu-jitsu of Dos Santos, that's going to be a threat. Guys, I'm not super confident in my prediction, but I'm going to side with Miles Johns. You know, Anderson Dos Santos, a bit older. If he doesn't get the submission, what's going to happen? I feel more comfortable siding with Miles. My numbers, I put Miles Johns around minus 160. And the actual numbers, we've got Miles Johns minus 180, minus 170. So yeah, I agree with those numbers. If he gets a little bit higher, maybe there's a little bit of value on Dos Santos. But yeah, right now, the Miles Johns line, it looks pretty good. All right, we've got Khalid Taha taking on Sergei Morozov. Oh my God, this is a pick -em. This is a straight pick -em. Taha is, you know, this guy's decent. He can wrestle. He can bang. He can go a full 15 minutes. Even when he's getting the brakes beaten off of him by Rayoni Barcelos, there's no quit in Khalid Taha. Now, Sergei Morozov, zero wins, one loss inside the UFC. However, his debut was against Umar Nurmagomedov. Now, for those of you that don't know Umar, believe me, this guy's coming through. As you can tell by his surname, Nurmagomedov. Yeah, this guy's going to... He's going to be a household name in a few years' time. But this time, he's got a better matchup. You know, Sergei Morozov and Khalid Taha, this is a really well-put-together matchup. Guys, again, I'm not too confident in my prediction, but I'm going to side with Sergei Morozov. And the only reason I'm not too confident is because I respect Khalid Taha. I know this guy has a lot of heart, so he could prove me wrong. My numbers, I'll keep him quite close. I'll put Morozov minus 150. And we've got Morozov plus 130. Wow. So maybe I'm overrating Morozov a little bit. But I don't think so, man. I think Morozov had a really tough debut against Umar Namogamedov. This time he's got a way better matchup to showcase his skill. But man, maybe Khalid Taha just proves me wrong. We'll see. Amanda Lemos taking on Montserrat Ruiz. Now this is a matchup I'm more confident in. I've got a stronger lean on this one. Amanda Lemos. This girl looked nasty. Really nasty in her last matchup. Her boxing was just on point. The jab. Super lightning. Amanda Lemos man. Arguably one of her best performances in the UFC. Now some of you may be thinking Montserrat Ruiz. Who is this girl? Now this girl, I remember vividly her debut. She just kept throwing Cheyenne Bays to the mat like she was an amateur. And it wasn't like a single leg or a double leg or anything traditional. She kept doing it with a scarf hold. You know, she was scarf hold throwing her to the mat like she was an amateur. And that's her trick, man. That's what Montserrat Ruiz does. She gets that scarf hold and then she gets you to the mat. Now, is she going to do that to Amanda Lemos? I don't think so, guys. I really don't think so. I do kind of worry about Amanda's cardio. She does slow down. So if she slows down, maybe Ruiz can look to take advantage of that. But I don't think so, guys. I think Amanda's going to keep Montserrat on the outside, land her kicks, land her jabs and just walk away with this one. Now, if Ruiz can prove me wrong and get that scarf hold throw or beat Amanda Lemos, man, I'll be amazed. I really would. But that's going to be my prediction. I think Amanda Lemos, she's fought the better competition. And that trick from Ruiz, it's not going to work this time. My numbers, I'd put Amanda Lemos at least a minus 200. We've got Amanda Lemos minus 5. 
Oh my goodness. So everyone's counting out Ruiz with that scarf hold. Rightfully so. Let's go. All right, moving into the last fight on the prelim card. We've got Daniel Rodriguez taking on Preston Parsons. And I know a lot of people listening right now are thinking, who is Preston Parsons? Now, I've watched a bit of tape on him. He seems to be a wrestler. He likes to take you to the mat, ground and pound you. He wants to choke you out. Now, if the fight is kept standing, he will strike. You know, this guy will strike with you on the feet. Put it this way, guys. I've seen guys debut on shorter notice looking way less impressive than Preston Parsons. You know, this guy really isn't bad. Rear naked chokes, arm bars, even has a win over Agnesio Bahamondes. You know, the guy who debuted against Macdessi. Now, of course, we do need to speak about Daniel Rodriguez. We know who this guy is, right? When we think of Daniel Rodriguez, we think of the boxing, but... Man, this guy has some pretty good jujitsu too. You know, he got that guillotine choke against uh, Tim Means after stunning him. Basically beat him twice. Club and sub. Yeah, I've got a side with Daniel Rodriguez. He's the proven fighter in the UFC. Boxing's good. Jiu-jitsu's good. Although Preston Parsons looks pretty good on tape, coming in on short notice... You've still got a side with Daniel Rodriguez, in my opinion. So yeah, I'll take D-Rod and maybe a TKO. You know, I wouldn't be shocked to see him get Preston out of there. Now my numbers, purely because Preston looked pretty good on tape, I'm going to put D-Rod minus 200. You know, and that's being pretty kind. You have to put Daniel the favourite, but not a massive one. Minus 2 is it's still pretty steep, but it's not minus 4. It's not minus 5. And the actual numbers, we've got Daniel Rodriguez minus 240, minus 250. So yeah, even the bookies know Preston Parsons, don't completely sleep on this guy. If you're going to bet on Daniel Rodriguez, don't go crazy five units. You know, go maybe a unit at most. You don't want to go too crazy. All right, my homies, you know what time it is. If you waited to smoke with me, amen. If you've been smoking this whole time, double amen. If you're not a smoker, but you enjoy the smoke breaks, triple amen gang, let's go. Man, how many times have I said that on my channel? You know, if you waited to smoke with me, amen. If you've been smoking this whole time, double amen. How many times have I said that? Quite a few now, man. All right, this is my Instagram, guys. UFC Lay. Give it a follow if you've got Instagram. My Patreon, shout out to the 53 members on Patreon, just crazy, really crazy, and the betting Discord group, it's getting lit, it's getting more and more lit every week, so yeah, shout out to you guys man, now this card is a little bit more difficult to find our spots, but yeah, I think we're going to do it, I think we're going to find the spots, alright guys, so for the smoke break topic this week, Shout out to the bro who sent me this one on Instagram. Shout out to you, Liam. So we're going to read the message. I've recently tried weed for the first time and loved it. It felt unreal like an out-of-body experience. But after it, it knocked me out cold. Slept for a few hours. Yeah, that might happen to you, man. And that was only from a couple drags. Maybe you could talk about how to fully control the vibe when you're on it. For the new smokers. You seem to know how to be chill when it hits you. Hey, amen to this one. I like this topic, man. I like it, guys. So, this is a good topic, man, because there's a lot of experienced smokers who, has, who have listened to that message and you're thinking, you know, how can we help Liam? What advice will we give to Liam, who's a new smoker, right? Now, if you go online, man, you type it in, you're going to get some other answers, right? The answers I'm, I'm going to give you with topics, guys, it may not be your regular answers, but it's just, just what I think, right? So my advice for you, Liam, bro, enjoy it. Don't try to control it, man. Don't try to control it. Enjoy it, right? You said in your message, just from a couple drags, I went to sleep. It felt like an out-of-body experience. My advice to you, enjoy it. And I'll tell you why. 
It's not going to last forever, bro. Right? Every single experienced smoker listening to this message, think back to your first few blunts. Think those years ago when you got toasted, completely toasted from a couple drags. Yeah. How many times have you had that same high? Yeah, I haven't had it once. That first time I got I got toasted, that second time, that first few times, I have never been as high as that. Ever. It doesn't matter what strain I've got. It doesn't matter how good the weed is. I've never been that toasted. And I can completely relate to what you're saying with the outer body experience. You know, I remember years ago, man, sitting there playing FIFA and it felt like I was above my body looking down at the TV bird's eye view man i got so toasted so yeah that's my advice to you liam don't try to control it enjoy it because it's not gonna last bro you know in six months time you're gonna think back man i got so high on those first few blunts i got so high so yeah that's my advice man don't try to control it enjoy it you know it's the same with anything man tolerance right if you go to the gym and start lifting weights, you're going to put some muscle on. But what happens for the guys who have a lot of muscle already? It's harder to put muscle on, right? It's the same as smoking weed. So enjoy those first few blunts. You're never going to get as toasted as that ever again. And that's my advice to you. And on that note, Amen. You know, and for the experienced smokers listening to that topic, think back to your first few blunts all those years ago. Yeah, enjoy it, man. Enjoy it. So yeah, guys, let's get into breaking down this main card. Billy Quarantillo taking on Gabriel Benitez. Pick em. This is a pick em. Billy Quarantillo isn't exactly this super technical guy, but his heart, his heart and determination... You can't question it. He's going to keep walking forward. He's going to show that he's got good cardio. If you haven't got that heart and cardio, the way Billy Quarantillo has, he's going to show that. You know, he's going to show you, look, I'm willing to go much further than you. Now, Gabriel Benitez, you can't sleep on this guy. He's really nasty. When you think of really bad knees, like the worst knee finishes in the UFC, you're going to think of Jorge Masvidal. But what Gabriel Benitez did to Justin James, super nasty, really, really nasty. I would say the better striker is Gabriel Benitez, but something is telling me that Billy Quarantillo, his heart and determination, it might be the difference. It's one of these matchups that I'm looking forward to, to watching, but I'm not looking forward to betting on, right? I'm not going to bet on this one. Yeah, and my prediction is going to be Billy Quarantillo. I know the opponent is really tough, and that's why I'm not going to bet it. My numbers, I wouldn't put Billy more than minus 120. You know, honestly, a close one. And the actual numbers, we've got Billy Quarantillo plus 170. Wow. Gabriel Benitez minus 200. I mean, I could be wrong. I really could be wrong. Gabriel Benitez, super nasty kicker. But Billy's got a lot of heart. So yeah, I'm looking forward to that one. All right, moving into the next one, we've got Rodolfo Vieira taking on Dustin Stoltzfus. So both of these fighters are primarily jiu-jitsu practitioners. I know a lot of people are going to be thinking about what Anthony Hernandez did to Rodolfo. Really shocking scenes. You know, what can you say? Just completely shocking. When you submit a jiu-jitsu god and you're not even known as a BJJ guy, yeah, crazy. Now, why did Anthony Hernandez find that submission? Rodolfo Vieira, terrible gas tank. Really, really bad. So if he doesn't get the finish in round one, who knows, right? The opponent, Dustin Stoltzfus. Like I said, he's primarily a BJJ guy too. Now, as we know, guys, styles make fights. Both of these guys like jujitsu. I think... More than likely, it does go to the mat. And the better BJJ player is Rodolfo Vieira. So, yeah, that's going to be my prediction. And like I mentioned, man, if it doesn't happen in round one, 
Who knows what we get outside of round one? It didn't look good against Anthony Hernandez. So who knows? My numbers, purely because of the bad gas tank, I would put Rodolfo around minus 170. And the actual numbers, we've got Rodolfo minus 250. So yeah, he's a favourite, but he's not going to minus four. You know, people understand that if it's not round one, who knows? Alright guys, we've got Matthias Gamrot taking on Jeremy Stevens. Low key, really decent matchup. Matthias Gamrot, one win, one loss inside the UFC. Some people may say he won his debut. There's an argument he did. He didn't leave any questions in his most recent performance. Completely obliterated Scott Holtzman. Now Scott Holtzman's quite a tough guy. So to do that, you know, I took note. Really impressive. Now, another fighter that's quite tough is Jeremy Stevens. You know, this guy is notoriously known for being tough. The type of fighter that's going to take your shots to land his kill shot. Now, Jeremy Stevens, he's coming off quite a bad knockout loss. Calvin Cater just landed this car crashing elbow. Really nasty. I mean, there's no other way of explaining it. The elbow looked like a car crash. Now, the better wrestler in this matchup is Matthias Gamrot. He could potentially take down Jeremy Stevens. I don't want to underestimate Matthias. You know, he could get a TKO on the feet. If he did that against Scott Holtzman, he could do that against Jeremy Stevens. But I also don't want to underestimate Jeremy. You know, this guy has over 40 professional fights. I wouldn't be shocked, man. You know, it only takes one big punch. My prediction, guys, I'm going to side with Matthias Gamrot. He's fresher, he's got the wrestling advantage, and he's knocking guys out now. So yeah, I'll side with Gamrot to beat the veteran, Jeremy Stevens. My numbers, I'd put Gamrot at least a minus 200. The only way I see Jeremy Stevens winning is literally finding that knockout punch. If it doesn't come, it's because Matthias Gamrot, man, he's in control. So yeah, I'll take Mateus. Alright homies, co-main event. We've got Marion Renal taking on Misha Tate. Let's be completely honest guys. If this fight happened a few years ago, Misha Tate is a huge favourite, right? Former champion, really, really decent wrestling. Just a good mixed martial artist is Misha Tate. However, she hasn't been inside the octagon in nearly five years. So now we've got to look at this matchup and think, does Marion Renal have a shot? Does she have a chance at beating a former champion? Marion Renal is 44 years old, hasn't won a fight in over two years. If there's going to be anyone that Marion Renal beats at this point in her career, it's probably going to be a fighter that hasn't fought in five years. But the flip side, guys, if you're Misha Tate and you're coming back to the UFC and you want a winnable matchup, well, there you go, 44-year-old Marion Renal. It's a winnable fight for either girl. For me, guys, I think if Misha Tate has been training for like half a year or a year, I think she should have enough to beat Marion Renal, even with five years off. But it all depends, man. We're going to see how much Misha has really trained. How much she really wants to return and get a win. It's a winnable fight for either girl. But I'll take the former champion, Misha Tate. Marion likes to use her BJJ. But Misha, very intelligent when it comes to grappling. So yeah, I'll side with the former champion that hasn't fought in five years. Alright homies, main event. We've got Islam Makashev, Habib 2.0 taking on Tiago Moises. Now there's two ways and two ways only that Tiago Moises is going to win this matchup. Number one, he finds a submission. Number two, he finds a TKO. Is Tiago Moises going to win a decision against Habib 2.0? Absolutely not. Now is he going to find a knockout punch against Islam Makashev? Probably not considering that Tiago Moises isn't a striker. This guy is a grappler. He's a pure BJJ player. Islam Makashev is primarily a wrestler. Tiago primarily a BJJ guy. So the fight's probably going to hit the mat. Now, that's where Tiago Moises most likely finds a win if he is able to win this match. 
he's going to have to find a submission against Islam Makashev. But you look at Islam against Drew Dober, finishing off a head and arm choke in half guard. Yeah? For all the jiu-jitsu nerds listening to this breakdown right now, you know how impressive that is to finish a head and arm in half guard. I'm not going to predict that Tiago Moises finds a submission. I'm not going to predict that he finds a TKO. What I'm going to predict is Islam Makashev continues this run towards the 155 title. I'll take Islam Makashev to potentially ground and pound Tiago Moises inside this 25 minute fight. My numbers, I'd put Islam the biggest favourite on this card. At least a minus 300. And we've got Islam minus 6, minus 7. Yeah, like I said guys, Habib 2.0. And a lot of people know it too. You know, a lot of people can see that this guy is replicating what Habib done. They can see he's probably a better striker already than Habib. This guy is scary. I think the only way to beat him is to find a fluke knockout or a fluke submission. But I don't see it. I think Islam Makashev via domination in this main event. All right, homies, make sure you drop down your underdogs, parlays, all of that good stuff. And I'll catch you in the comment section. Peace.